Y aloha Friday. Welcome to a brand new episode of Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. On today's episode of Perspectives on Global Justice, guest Ruby Menon will share with our viewers an update about the successful program that she, she started almost five years ago, the CARE program. CARE stands for Correctional Reentry Project. Join us for a time of great talk stories about the power and the strength the arts has on people's emotional and physical well-being, as well as uh, a, catalyst in, uh, a catalytic force for newfound pride, creativity, healing, and even on how to make money. On that note, welcome! <laughs> Thank you, Bea. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. You know, this is just such a an important you know, topic uh, for us to have this conversation on. So but before we started, um, can you share with our viewers a little bit of your background, like where are you from and uh, you know, where are you at as far as work these days? Oh, okay, yeah. gee, um, I don't even know where to start. Uh, well, um, I was originally born in Geneva, Switzerland, so French was my first language. And um, then we moved to the United States when I was young. Uh, my father used to work in the United Nations, and so we moved around quite a bit. Landed in New York City, then had to learn English, and then um, moved to the Bay Area, which I kind of consider more my home, and um, then moved to uh, Hawaii, got married, and have been here for almost 20 years plus. I think I've lost track. Um, and I've had several careers. Um, my educational background is I have a master's and MBA, uh, but I had a strong business background. I've worked in human resources and finances. Uh, about maybe three or four years ago, I decided that I wanted to do a complete change in my career path. And I've always loved technology, and so I decided to um, actually, my husband and I started to create a, uh, an assessment product for the nonprofit that he has founded called WorkNet. And um, uh, WorkNet's uh, mission is to help people transition from prison to the community. So it offers transitional services like helping people get their ID documents, um, securing a job, housing, a driver's license mm -hmm. so that they can have better job opportunities. And I have always helped him in the periphery. And a few, uh, many, several years ago, we created an assessment tool to help these individuals transition back to the community by identifying the types of risks that we would need to manage for them as they're coming out, and also to identify what types of vocational pursuits they might be interested in so we could do a better job match. Right. Because of my HR background, I created the vocational piece. He did the risk profile. We tested this product in the field for several years, and then about 2012, I said, you know what, we need to transition this to an online product. And so all of a sudden, I found myself becoming a product manager because I had to hire a developer, um, and I just jumped in 110%, learned a little bit about coding, product management, UX design, and I just found I loved the whole concept of taking a product from an idea to an actual, like, you know, delivery working product. Of a pro yeah. yeah, delivering a product. And so I decided, you know what, I think I want to do this for a career. And so a few years ago, I um, got a wonderful opportunity to work for an early stage startup uh, locally here as a product manager. And so that's what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. But um, I get bored easily, so I loved being involved in a lot of different projects. And this care project has always been. Um, since five years ago, it's been in my heart. Um, mm -hmm. It came about, actually, when um, my husband and I were talking one day, as we normally do, at the kitchen table, and he was telling me, you know, how much artistic talent exists in the prisons. And, and how did you guys notice that? Like, was it through your interactions with uh, uh, inmates? So oh, absolutely. Just... Yeah, because... Um, so one of the pro programs that he offers through WorkNet is a cognitive skills restructuring program or cognitive skills. And so he has a face to face contact with these mm -hmm. with the inmates. He gets to know them very intimately and they would show him stuff. You know, they would like, you know, bring him like artwork. And he was like going, wow, this is mind boggling. I mean, you guys are so talented. We've got to do something to showcase your art. And right. so 
we started talking and I, business mind thinking, gee, I wonder if there's a way, the question came up, I wonder if there's a way that we could market and sell their artwork. Mm -hmm. And we just kept on cooking this idea and then one day I just said, you know what, I want to, I want to take this on. I want to figure out a way. And, so um, that was the birth of care? That was the birth of the care project. project. Yeah. Okay. And so when you started, was it 2012, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How did you um, deliver this project to the individuals who are, you know, in, you know, incarcerated right now in Hawaii? And how many prisons did you start with? And what was their response as you said, hey, it's a project, you know, here we are. Oh, they love it. Um, so how it started was, um, because I have a, a technology background, uh, one of the things that we do in technology is we talk about a minimum viable product, which means that we take something, a uh, very basic idea, and we test it before we decide to go full on and launch it. So that's what I did. I, I um, thought, okay, let me test this idea. I had no idea if the public would even be accepting of incarcerated, you know, inmate art. I didn't know if people would just say, Oh, inmate art, no, no, thank you. Or, you know, if there'd be some interest. I had no idea, right? So I got very lucky. I got to meet Miley Meyer, who is from Namea Hawaii Gallery, at an event. And lo and behold, everybody was telling me, you've got to talk to Miley and, you know, tell her about this project. And all of a sudden, one day, I'm at an event with her. I'm sitting next to her, serendipity. And I thought, oh, now's my chance. I've got to tell right. her about this project. And so I did, and she said, I love this the idea of this. The other thing, too, is because Miley um, supports a lot of na uh, Native Hawaiian projects. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the Native Hawaiian population is way overrepresented in, the, in our prisons. Right. It's like one out of four Native Hawaiians are in the They represent 30%. 30% yeah. of the... And, and also are the highest group that, that recidivate, that, that continuously go back into the system. Right. Um, so, Miley invited me to her gallery. Uh, at that time, I had two artists that I was working with had already transitioned out of prison and are in the community, mm -hmm. so I brought them with me. Do we have any and pictures of uh, their work with us? Actually, yes, I have. Um, the, the artists that we're representing, this, the, this eagle was made by uh, Mo Kalai Kai, who uh, spent six years in Arizona. And he has a very interesting story. He was a welder by trade. But he always loved art. He always had an artistic talent. And it took him going to Arizona in, in, in prison to rediscover his artistic talent. Mm -hmm. And he had you know, a lot of time on his hands, and he started to draw. And, and he then created a portfolio that, I swear to God, it must be this thick for all the time that he spent there. And interestingly enough, art in the prison is used as a, sort, as, as a uh, currency. Because people would come to him and say, Mo, I want to send something to my girlfriend. Here's a photo of her. Can you draw a photo, for, uh, a, 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 a picture of a you know, picture drawing of her? Yes. Oh, and wow. so he would draw, and they would pay him. And then he would be able to use his money for um, you know, the, the store, you know, to buy things at the store. Mm -hmm. And he said after a year, he was able to save enough, uh, uh, enough money to be able to buy a television for his cell. Oh, my uh, goodness. So... People don't realize that um, people with artistic talent in the prisons are respected and they have a way of uh, monetizing within that system where right. they, they can use it as a currency. Right. So uh, a artwork that is done um, by you know, a person who is in, a, in the correctional system, uh, does it get to be then put on exhibit in an art gallery or online and or, or do they have to wait until they get out of um, you know, prison to be able to do that? Yeah, so that's the beauty of our, pro, of our project. Um, uh, so going back to Miley, what she agreed to do was to take um, some of Mo's work on consignment right. and so he sells some of these images that you see um, on, the, on the TV screen are actually on cards mm -hmm. and he sells those cards at her gallery and uh, I started this relationship with her about four years ago and to this day he still receives 
quarterly commission checks because his cards sell. People love his images. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I tested the idea. Uh, we had a, an opportunity to, to sell the artwork in front of her gallery. And um, that weekend, the artist made about $300. And so they were able to interact with the public and talk to them. And I started to see something amazing. The, I, like I said, I didn't know how the public was going to react. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was that when people saw the artwork, the first thing they, they reacted to was, a, was the art, right? They, they mm -hmm. loved the art. And then we would tell them the story, you know, about the care project and the fact that this person was incarcerated. And I noticed the bear, because at first I thought, as soon as I say incarcerated, something's going to, you know, they're going to shift, right? right That's what, yeah. That was what I expected, but I didn't see that. Instead, what I saw was people saying, looking at the person, looking at the art, and going like, wow, everybody deserves a second chance. And so because of that art piece, it melted their barriers, their resistance, their stereotypes, whatever mm -hmm. was going on, if you had just presented them as an incarcerated person. And it melted that down, and they saw them as a real person who had mm -hmm. some talent, who had, who deserved another chance in society. Yeah, and you know, I think that it is so important because uh, you know, in the society that we live in, we are so judgmental. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, if you have a criminal record or are in jail, you're not a good person, or you're not worthy of second chances, or not valuable. Right. And that's not true. And uh, you know, that reminds me a lot uh, of. Um, one teaching from my mother, so wise, you know, that she would say to me, it was so important to differentiate between the person and the behavior right. and the choices that they might have made, good, bad, or ugly, because they are not uh, their behaviors in those choices. There's much more to that. And we also have to work to in, uh, preserve the integrity of that person, which I think for a lot of inmates and a lot of people who, you know, hit the criminal justice system, that's like it's completely assassinated. Mm -hmm. You're no longer a person anymore. You are, you know, this offense that you committed and you have a record, you know. And yeah. I just love it that the arts actually uh, was able to reconnect people to a very core principle, you know. Yes. That's really special. Yes. and I, and. What I realize is the power of the art, you know, originally our model was we wanted to market and sell the artwork so that yeah. these inmates could earn money for their transition back to the community right. because oftentimes they're released with no financial resources. Yeah. So that was the objective of the program. But what I saw from that experience is that it is so much more uh -huh. that it, it has the ability of changing hearts and minds, basically, Absolutely. you know, through the artwork. So let's talk about that change of minds and hearts, even from the perspective of uh, uh, individuals who you know are incarcerated I, I don't like to use the incarcerated person you know so, no, mm -hmm. it's a person past an individual past you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. their condition is of being incarcerated mm -hmm. but but um when they started to embrace care project what is it that you have seen from that little seed at the beginning mm -hmm. and as they progress mm -hmm. you know in, in, in their own work Oh, I have some wonderful stories from that. Do tell. Um, <laughs> so, um, so a part of the launch uh, of the CARE project is we got uh, some seed funding. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to launch it at the women's prison as a pilot project. And then from there on, so we've added actually at the women's prison now for about four years, going on four years, I think. And so the women that have gone through the program, I've just saw some just amazing, amazing things. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been in the prison, but it's a oh, very, yes. very harsh environment, yeah. very harsh. Yeah. I, and, I go, uh, you know, for work. Yeah, that's I right. I haven't been there, you know, as an inmate yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, never know, I don't right? think we want to be there as an inmate. <laughs> but what we found with the CARE project is that not only that, the, so we would have two classes, uh, per week for uh, three hours each. Mm. Was it two hours? Two hours each. And so uh, the women would, first of all, look forward to coming because it gave them a chance, a safe space. Because one of the things I was adamant about is we wanted to create a safe space so that they could feel like they could unleash their creativity. And so we gave them um, some tools. So some of them we let them do some, you know, whatever they wanted to do artistically. If they were good at drawing, then they could draw. 
Uh, we were teaching them some different things. I had an art instructor, so, so for some of them who wanted to learn some different things. We started out with quilling. I don't know if you know what um, quilling is. The paper where you roll it in little coils and then you make very, you know, different, uh, images. different images and things. Yeah, let's take a minute break and then we'll give continuity to Oh, sure. This. Okay. Yes, thank you. Konnichiwa. Mm -hmm. え、ティンクテックハワイが日本語でお送りしています。こんにちは、ハワイ。ホストのクニセイカリです。え、毎週各週月曜日、え、2時からですね、日本語で日本語で活躍されていらっしゃるハワイのいろいろな方をお招きして
Um, and we also sell the artwork on our website at www.worknetinc.org. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, one of the things that I've, uh, right now I'm pretty much the only one who's handling all of this, and because I have a day job and a whole bunch of other things, I, try, I do my best to try and market and sell their artwork. So I right. try to go through social media. Uh, I'm hoping to have a little show at the Impact Hub uh, uh, in um, Akaako. Oh, I've already yes. started to talk to them. Uh, so that my next iteration of this is um, to be able to have a little art show so that people can be more exposed to their stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, we had the opportunity to participate in the Purple Prize. So let's talk about what is Purple Prize for our viewers who don't know okay. <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Um, and who yeah. issues it? Yes, yeah, so the Purple Prize is an awesome, awesome program. I can't uh, sing their praises enough. Um, so what they are is an accelerator, but is rooted in Hawaiian values as the foundation of our social impact projects. So and that's their focus, social impact projects. Let's talk about Hawaiian values in the context of Purple Prize. Mm. A little bit. So what they taught us, uh, the, our first few classes were actually going out into nature and understanding this, these amazing systems, these water management systems that our ancient Hawaiians built, like, you know, with the whole fish pond man water management mm -hmm. system from 700 years ago. And it just blew my mind. It's like, these people didn't have computers. They could go and Google that stuff and figure out, you know, how the heck did they even, like, figure this stuff out. It's just amazing. They knew nature. And, and they, and they just figured out this amazing system of the indigenous, what they call indigenous technology yeah. that we're actually going back to now to relearn these systems of how everything is interdependent. We cannot do something here and expect for it not to have a ripple effect over here, right? right? So we have to have that connection. So they really tried to root us into that foundation so that we thought about how we're building our project or program or technology with that in mind for so for have a, 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 a bigger social impact. Mm -hmm. And so our project was accepted in the what they call the connections phase. And I was challenged with, at first, you know, uh, the, the, the big part of it is that they want you to figure out a technology component because they want to move this into the 21st century. And I was really racking my brain, like, how, what am I going to do for technology? I mean, this is like a, this is artwork and, you know, showing in the gallery. I just had like a very, you know, blinders on. And I had this amazing experience. I went to this um, show at the Arts at Marks, and the circus performer created augmented reality so that we would look through our phones through different parts of his experience, his, his performance, and we would see all these like uh, different objects coming into the environment. And we had like a multi-sensory experience. And mm -hmm. it was a wow moment. And the next morning, I woke up, talked to my husband at the kitchen table. I don't know, that kitchen table spawned a lot of ideas. It's a magic, it's a magic carpet. It's a, ma it's a magic carpet. <laughs> it's a magic table. And we were talking about how much we loved that, that experience and how wonderful it was and the wow moments. And then all of a sudden, I thought, well, what if I did that with the art? Like, what if I did augmented reality with the art? And then I started like researching and realizing that augmented reality is being used now with art. And people are going into galleries with their phones and pointing their phone at the, at the image and then having a multi-century augmented reality experience with it. So that's what I had suggested at the Purple Prize to be my, my technology piece is to have that AR layer for some of the pieces. So that's my next iteration. That's the new iteration of the mm -hmm. CARE project now, which is to bring it into the 21st century with augmented reality. And I'm hoping right. to do that with one piece, just to test it. Yeah. Um, when we do our show, uh, I'm thinking probably of the whale. I love the whale because it has so much, uh, I don't know if you can show that whale again. Robert, um, do we have the whale? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it has a lot of fluidity and movement. So I'm hoping to do something with that image. Mm -hmm. That is just so neat. So, and the artists get to hear about uh, the um, evolution of the project also, like from what is happening from beginning to like now with like these new additions, new spaces. Yeah, um, because uh, Mo Kalai Kai is now our art instructor at the women's prison. So he's teaching them a lot of stuff because he's such a brilliant artist. So let's talk about Mo a little bit. Was he one of the alumni of Care Project? Um, oh. So interestingly enough, um, how Mo 
came, so Mo was a client, uh, I think, uh, a while ago, and mm -hmm. then you know he we found him a job as an artist in a t-shirt shop, mm -hmm. and every and so when I was building the care project, at first I was looking at community artists because we didn't we weren't in the prison yet, and everybody would tell me you've got to talk to this guy Mo, but we didn't know like how to find him or anything. One day Mo shows up at Worknet. And apparently, he just lost like his that. just like that. He he lost his job. Yeah. Uh, they got laid off, and he came to us to help him find another job. And uh, at that time, Warren, who was working with us, like you know, came to me and says, "Ruby, Ruby, this is the guy I've been telling you about. You've got to come and meet him." You know, so oh, you did. and I did, and I started talking to him about the project, and he was all in after that. And then we recruited a couple of other artists, and that's how we started the care project. Was with him. And these other two artists. One artist now has a very successful tattoo, tattoo shop, um, and the other artist, she's kind of taking care of her grandkids right now, so she's not so much involved in her art. But Mo is our principal artist. He's and we we now he is uh, one of our employees at Worknet mm -hmm. as our resident artist. So he creates a lot of the artwork, and he also um, teaches the women at the. Uh, women's prison and eventually when we launch it at the men's prison he will be also the art mm -hmm. instructor there. That is wonderful and so any plans to work with our JV correctional system because I imagine this would be so embraced by our teenagers also uh, with, and young adults at our juvenile. Oh juvenile. System. Yeah. No we we haven't really thought about that Maybe yet. Maybe there is a seat there. But, there. I mean, there's, there's always, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we can get some more funding for this and we can uh -huh. uh, start to expand it, my uh -huh. hope is that we can prototype the project here, have it be successful, and then start to launch it in prisons across the United States. Mm -hmm. Because there's artistic talent locked up in our prisons, you know, nationally. Oh, absolutely. And if we can give all the artists uh, some type of vehicle you know, where they can actually showcase their artwork and market and sell their artwork. Um, I think that would be huge, you know, because the, the other ancillary things that people don't realize is that when I go back into the prison and I tell the women or our artists, like, you're sort of sold, the self-esteem oh, boost so is priceless, yeah. you know. You can't put money on that. You, you can't put a monetary value on that. It just validates them. It makes them feel like they've got something value yeah. to offer the community you know so um i just think that there's so many amazing byproducts of this this project not only the fact that they could earn some money but all the the self-esteem and then the break the changing of hearts and minds i mean there's just yeah. so many different things that are so cool about this project. Now, this is just beautiful i mean i can't believe we are at the end of our program for today <laughs> but i have two invitations for you one is that uh, you come back uh, as a guest uh, in the near future again for part two okay. of this beautiful venture that we started, and that you bring, uh, um, uh, you know, Mo and all the uh, uh, artists that you know are now maybe on probation or they're already, you know, in, in the, the community, community. Mm -hmm. so that we can also continue, you know, to hear. This beautiful love story from that perspective as well. You know? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, yeah. This is wonderful. Well, thank you so much for this thank vision. You, thank you so and much for letting me tell my story. Our story absolutely. About and this, you know, magic table that you have in your kitchen <laughs> <laughs> and this beautiful partnership with your husband and with the community at large. And that may, this beautiful project, you know, expand to uh, the men's uh, correctional systems here in Hawaii very smoothly and be successful and uh, you know reach out uh, nationwide thank you thank you aloha aloha <laughs>